Thank you. Uh, look, I think Judge Blake got it right. Uh, she held that uh, the state had allowed unnecessary duplication of the programs offered by historically black institutions by the traditionally white institutions. Uh, the, the question is, where do we go from here? <coughs> The objective is to provide equal opportunity for all of the students in the state of Maryland. And it's an issue, I think, like many others, that is not best resolved by picking a fight or uh, by bringing a lawsuit. The, uh, the way to solve this problem, and, and the judge drew us the path to it, is to work together, to work collaboratively and cooperatively. The judge did not decide on a remedy, which he said is, you need to mediate and sort this out. Ironically, the problem arose because in 2005, Attorney General Joe Curran warned our state system, warned the Ehrlich administration that it was in danger of unnecessarily duplicating programs at HBIs. The Ehrlich administration ignored that advice. As Attorney General, I would work to bring these groups together. It's an ideal job for an attorney general that can mediate, that can work with all groups in disparate interests and achieve a result that is best for all concerned. Now, before you sit down, I'd like to touch on one of the things you uh, talked about, and that's uh, sort of this amorphous gray area. I was impressed by the pivot, by the way. <laughs> you're, you're quicker than I am on my feet, and a lot of people who've seen me dance can attest to that. Uh, it's. Far too many members of the audience have seen that. But um, one thing that's sort of peculiar with these racial issues is that there's a dichotomy between the law that's on the book and the culture that exists. So you can have laws that are entirely equitable and there still be a cultural divide. Do you see this as being something, uh, as sort of an exercise of soft power uh, that the attorney general can uh, utilize the office to make headway on? A absolutely, I do. Um, look, we, the, um, we have an example in our state of a relationship that works between HBIs and TWIs, historically black institutions and traditionally white institutions. On the Eastern Shore, the University of Maryland Eastern Shore is an HBI, and Salisbury University is a, a TWI. And they have worked assiduously to avoid duplication of programs and to cooperate with each other to allow their students credit for work at their sister school. Uh, the Attorney General has a unique uh, position and un unique ability to bring the university system constituents together to reach that kind of cooperative, collaborative agreement all across the state. Thank you. Delegate Frick. One of the greatest things about this state is our diversity. <laughs> it is a great part of our history, it is a great part of our present, and I think it's an essential part of our competitiveness as we, read, as we move into the future. And the HBCUs are an in, incredibly important piece of that. Uh, they're a great part of our history. They've been there for generations of Marylanders, and we need to make sure that they have a future just as bright and just as robust as the past. I agree with the court decision that the duplication, uh, unnecessary duplication of these high demand programs with traditionally white institutions is undermining and is unconstitutional and is not treating the HBCUs the way that we need to. Um, I, I think the Attorney General's office is struggling a little bit with uh, whether, whether we need to defend the lawsuit and win the case, which is in some aspects how, how you can think of their job, or whether they need to reach a proper settlement. Uh, and I'm, I'm encouraged that mediation that's been ordered by the court is going to be moving forward. Uh, if given the opportunity to be your next Attorney General, I'm someone who's not just going to try to win every lawsuit, because to me that's not the goal of this office. That's not the, uh, the primary responsibility. To me, the primary responsibility is to do justice by the people of this state. Thank you. Delegate Cardin. Thank you, Ben. First of all, I think it's inappropriate for an AG candidate to comment on the specifics of ongoing litigation. But let me say this. One of the great shames of this state is that Maryland uh, had a Jim Crow system of racially segregated education for 15 years after the Brown versus Board of Education decision. And out of the horror of that racially segregated education came four wonderful schools, Coppin, Morgan, UMES, and, and, uh, and, um, and Bowie, thank you, and Bowie State University. Thank you very much. Uh, and 
you know, these schools have served our, our state well and they served their student populations very well. I know this because my grandmother worked at Morgan State University for more than 20 years. She showed me how these institutions have really added to this great state. The district court found that, there, that the unnecessary dupl duplication of programs exacerbated the lingering impacts of racial segregation. An example is UMES has a white population of 13%, while the other three HBCUs are under 4%. In fact, Coppin, I think, is just around 1%. We would have been, all been better off if the HBCUs and the state had uh, come to a fair resolution. Right now, I hope for a speedy settlement, one that ensures the, uh, the continuation and the success of the HBCUs and eliminates the last vestiges of Jim Crow. Now, before we move on, I'd like to ask a follow-up with respect to that as well. Uh, one of the things that you touched on when you talked about the ongoing litigation is that, well, you didn't say this explicitly, but I'm going to mention it myself. Uh, it, with lawsuits, it's necessarily reactive in nature to some degree. You have to wait for somebody else to call issue to it, even if we can see these effects ourselves. Now, as an attorney general, you have a great degree of power. Do you see that power being something that you can use to take proactive measures rather than reactive measures to address these sort of issues? Absolutely. Thanks for that question. You know, if I should be so fortunate as to be in the next AG, uh, I, wanna, I want everybody to see um, me as an honest broker, and all parties should be able to, to believe that they're getting a fair shot and they're being heard. Um, We've heard uh, m many examples, a couple brought up tonight, of times when people felt as if they weren't getting a fair shot. I can think of environmental examples. I can think of this HBC, uh, HBCU example where people feel as if they're not getting the fair shot. And I believe that mediation is really the answer to this. And I have proven as a legislator that I can bring people together, both Republicans and Democrats, uh, both uh, uh, individuals and organizations, advocacy groups, and, um, and legislators. And I believe that as an attorney general, you have to constantly be thinking about how to mediate solutions before you go to litigation. Thank you. Now our next question looks at pro, re uh, pro se representation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I'm moving on too quick. I apologize, genuinely. Delegate Brave Boy. Thank you. I really appreciate this question. You know, I chair the Legislative Black Caucus, and for the past year and a half, we've been in discussions with the governor, and, a, and what I've said is, Mr. Governor, let's settle this lawsuit. Let's not cause any further embarrassment to our state. We knew we were wrong. You know, since 1939, the state has, you know, ish, uh, had reports given regarding the conditions of our historically black colleges and universities in our state. And each report stated that the state had intentionally un underfunded the HBCUs, that it had led to inferior facilities, that it led to inferior programs, and limited missions. This is something that the state's own reports indicated. So when we were in court, you know, and I, I attended the final oral arguments in U.S. District Court, and you know, it was is quite amazing when you heard uh, both of the arguments. But I think Judge Blake appropriately applied the Fordyce, the test that was laid out in Fordyce, and determined that the state unnecessarily duplicated programs. Now, what I've said to the governor is, the state did not lose. Because there is no loser when you now have the ability to create world-class institutions in our state through that mediation process. Judge Blake has determined that the state needs to create high-demand, unique programs at the HBCUs. Why is that a loss for the state? It is not a loss. It's a win for the state. I think this is a win-win proposition. That's and fine. as the Attorney General, I'll make sure that we have that big win.